Hey, it's Crystal here, host of the EV Life podcast. Welcome back to another episode. And I'm joined in studio now with our producer, Hannah Neal Robertson. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. And I'm really excited to continue our conversation from last week on EV maintenance. Yeah. So those of you who didn't get a chance to listen to last week's episode, I encourage you to go back and listen to it. We speak to Lacombe Quick Lane, which is an automotive shop in Lacombe, Alberta, that specializes in EV maintenance. And this week we speak to Steve Elder, who is an instructor at BCIT, and he actually helped build their EV maintenance program. Yeah, and Steve has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to EVs and hybrids. He's been involved in this space for quite a long time. And so he shares a little bit about his background and how he got involved with BCIT and helping them to create this course. And the course is offered to third-year apprentices and Red Seal mechanics, but they also work with businesses to train staff on how to properly handle electric vehicles. Yeah, I really enjoyed this conversation that we had with Steve, and he even references um, a conversation that you had, Crystal, with a guest last season. Yeah, so he makes reference to my conversation with Matt Carpenter, who is an instructor at SAIT. So we spoke to Matt last season. Um, It was episode eight of the podcast for season two called EV Technician Training and Technology with SAIT. And so if you're wondering who Matt is, because he does mention him um, a couple times in the interview, I I would recommend that you check out that episode as well. Exactly. And without further ado, here is my conversation with Steve Elder, BCIT instructor. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Hi, Crystal, and you're very welcome. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about your background, what it is that you do, and what your connection is to the EV industry? Yeah, I have uh, I completed a four-year apprenticeship automotive uh, in New Zealand, where I, I was born and raised, and I moved to Southern California in the early 1980s, and then landed up coming to Vancouver and worked for about four different General Motors dealers. In 2005, I went back to school and got my provincial instructor's diploma, which then allowed me to obviously instruct at uh, British Columbia Institute of Technology, BCIT. Mm -hmm. So I started at BCIT and taught a lot of the sort of normal stuff, a bit like the, the background that Matt Carpenter had when you interviewed him. Very similar sort of thing that the guys at FATE would do. And taught apprenticeship, uh, diploma, the AST diploma program. Did some dealer training. We are contracted, BCIT is contracted to deliver General Motors training, as I believe SAIT is actually in uh, Calgary as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it was 2012 when General Motors were releasing the Chevy Bolt, which was a plug-in hybrid. General Motors had another name for it, but it it was what we would consider to be a a plug-in hybrid. I, I... took the training and then got kind of really interested in in what was going on with this whole hybrid technology. The Nissan Leaf, which was a full electric car, had just been introduced the year before, and nobody sort of knew too much about that. Right. So we took, uh, I I took a training course with a company out of Boston because they were sort of the only players in in that space at that time. And one of the things we did was we rented a Nissan Leaf and then took it right apart. And we had no special <laughs> tools. We really didn't know. I shouldn't say we didn't know what we were doing. We knew how to keep ourselves safe. Right. But it was a, a pretty deep dive on a product that had only been around for uh, 12 to 18 months, I guess. And there was no information out there on it. Right. After that point, I came back to BCIT, like I say, took that that initial sort of training. And and now I I was sort of realizing that this was going to become something in the future. It was going to be big in the automotive. Kia Canada came to us and wanted us to deliver their dealer training for people in the West. So basically Winnipeg West, we took on that task of delivering uh, the training for Kia. Okay. So I've been delivering that training for more than 10 years for the Kia dealers. So you still do that? I, I still do that, yeah. Okay. I, I te- technically, I am retired. Uh, <laughs> but not really. 
Well, yeah, retirement looks different for everybody, I guess, yeah. right? I guess so. So then, mm-hmm. so then fast forward, I, I went to Korea a couple of times and I visited a uh, deer factory in Korea, watched them actually build the hybrids, which was really fascinating. So I was sort of getting a bit of a grounding and, and a bit of, you know, sort of base knowledge in that space, in the hybrid, and then eventually in the electric vehicle space. So what what's your current role with BCIT? So the course that we developed at BCIT, which is uh, Auto 4011, which is electric and hybrid vehicle maintenance and training, that, that was actually tasked to me to produce that program back in about 2018. So I have continued to deliver it from time to time, but they there is a full-time instructor, Jim Berladen, that has taken my position basically at BCIT, and he runs that. Um, well, basically as many times as, as they can kind of fit it into the schedule. So even though I am, like to say, technically retired, I am still coming in. I'm doing the occasional care training and also the electric vehicle and hybrid maintenance program. Can you tell me a little bit about that program, the EV maintenance program at BCIT? Is this just um, a course within a larger program? What does it look like and who is this for? So just to give you a little bit of background, to this course, in about 2018, the British Columbia government came to BCIT and said, we are seeing a lot of electric vehicles starting to show up. And one of the things that was happening was we were getting a lot of vehicles here in the Vancouver area that were what we would consider to be grey market vehicles. So they would be electric vehicles that were not sold new in Canada. So that was really what sort of sparked the whole thing. So what we've had to do is, and very similar to what Matt Carpenter had talked about, we are integrating some of the high-voltage technology into our regular automotive courses. So AST, the, the Automotive Service Technology and Operations, and also our apprenticeship. And what we're really, what we're trying to do within those programs is how do you test them? How do you make sure these things are safe? Make sure that they've done what we refer to as being safe down or powered down. Right. So it's pretty basic what we do with those students. Right. And what's the response been from students? Because I imagine even if you are just looking to get your, learn about auto mechanics just in general, right? Working on ICE vehicles, there are a lot more hybrids and EVs on the road right now. And so it's not unlikely that, you know, as you're working as a mechanic in the field that you will get customers who have EVs coming to you for help. And so what's been the response from students? So one thing I should kind of clarify about this is that before you can come into this, the BCIT course, you either have to be a licensed technician, a red seal technician, or a third year apprentice. Okay. So it, this is pretty high level. We've designed it purposely that way for two reasons. One is that the cost is, it's not huge, but when you look at an employer giving up a staff member, a tech, or someone who's going to be producing, you know, making relatively good money, for a period of time, then that becomes a challenge. So, I mean, ideally, we would like this program to be three weeks long, say 90, 90 hours. But what we did is we've got it. It's it's a 30-hour program, so it's one week. There is an online component that must be completed before the students come in, and that's about a six-hour portion. Mm-hmm. Once they're in there, it's very heavy hands-on. So the first day... We talk about safety. By the end of the day, we're pulling a battery out of an electric vehicle. By the, on the second day, we are completely disassembling an electric vehicle battery, a lithium-ion battery, right down to the cell level. So it is a very fast-paced course. Right. Okay, that makes sense. And so if someone's out there working as an auto mechanic right now and they have their red seal and they wanted to kind of gain that knowledge on EV maintenance, they could come apply for that course. Yes, yeah, and that's that's the idea. And, and when we first rolled this out, 
we rolled it out to, really it was kind of a pilot with the city of Vancouver because the city of Vancouver at that point, and I'm going back to 2019, had 145 either hybrid or electric vehicles in their fleet. They also gave us access to all their maintenance records for all those vehicles. So now we could go through and we could compile sort of known common causes, what, what's really going wrong with these vehicles. So that was very, very interesting, having the, like I said, the access to that. Then we rolled it out to Canadian Tire, Cal Tire, and then we did it for other colleges. In fact, in one of my classes, I had people from Vancouver Island, college instructors from Vancouver Island, as well as college instructors from Newfoundland. All in the, like, oh, so wow. We, so coast to coast. <laughs> Coast to coast, yeah, it was it was very very cool. Um, so yeah, that was that was great. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. Um, and you know, speaking of some like looking at those records to see what are the types of maintenance that these cars require, can you share some of those insights with us? Because the consensus is that EVs don't require as much maintenance as ICE vehicles, but it they there is still maintenance needed. So what what trends were you seeing? I think the, the big thing with the city of Vancouver vehicles anyway was the 12-volt battery, so what we call the auxiliary battery now. Mm-hmm. That was a fairly common failure. But other than that, I mean, there was the occasional flat tire. Well, you're going to get that in any vehicle, and especially from a city standpoint because they have visiting building sites, construction Zone, so that's not unusual to pick up a screw or a nail or something. Other than that, I, I think somebody had to tow a vehicle back from one of the ferry terminals because oh, they didn't know they had to plug it in. Well, that's, you know, that's a that's a that's a user problem, not a, not a yeah. problem with the, with the product. That's one of the problems of being an early adopter, right? Is sometimes you don't know these things. I think now. I will. I would hope most people buying an EV or a hybrid now are aware <laughs> that they need to be I, I plugged would in. I hope so as well. Yeah. yeah. And I should just mention, just to backtrack there a little bit, um, we actually did roll this out to uh, RCMP as well as the CAA. So we've done. You know, we have had uh, people here from British Columbia Automobile Association as well. So, and we've done that as a really. It, we've, we've kind of tailored the course to to that audience because. Some of them may not have had a red seal certification, but if we know it's all the same people or they're all with the same company, then we kind of know what they're after, right. like, you know, what, they, what they need to know to keep them safe. Um, like with the CAA training, would a lot of that be tailored around like properly towing the vehicle, but also, um, you know, boosting an electric vehicle? It's a little bit different, I guess, than a nice vehicle. Absolutely. And also, just keeping yourself safe around one generally, you know. So if if a if a tow truck is dispatched after an accident, then how do we know this vehicle is safe? So right. that kind of thing. We we kind of concentrated on that. But to to circle back to the maintenance thing, I think the big thing with the EVs is the fact that you're going to be putting probably twice as many tires on it as what you did with your ICE vehicle, and and that's just about weight. Those things are extremely heavy. Part of it also is electric vehicles produce maximum torque at anything above zero RPM. And torque is that thing we like because it pushes you back in the seat and gives you that good, that feeling of acceleration. Well, people tend to maybe overuse that a bit. Of course, the fire, fires burn out a bit quicker. Right. Um, but but on, the, on the other side of that is the brakes don't wear out. You know, I personally have a, a hybrid that we bought brand new uh, 11 years ago, and it's now got 188,000 kilometers on it, 188,000, mm-hmm. and it's still on its first set of brakes. In fact, oh, wow. I, I the, <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. I had the wheels off it recently, the same tires again, mm-hmm. and the brakes are, there's really no measurable wear on the brakes at 188,000 kilometers. So that is a, that's a big thing, you know? Yeah. So, that is impressive. Yeah, it is. But, but again, just to go back to that maintenance thing, one of the things that, because the hydraulic brakes are, are, let's call them traditional brakes, working the same way we rely on that regenerative braking, then the components within the brake system aren't moving. So they do need to be taken apart, lubricated, 
and I'm referring to the brake calipers and the brake sliders within mm-hmm. the caliper. So taken apart, cleaned, lubricated, put back together because I'm just not doing the work that they would you know, normally do with an internal combustion engine. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Before you go, I did want to ask if there were plans to expand or develop the program um, more. Like, how is that program changing in the future as, you know, the EV industry is evolving quite rapidly? So are there plans for tailoring the program to those changes? Yeah, absolutely. So we've just launched a, it's just a one-day course, but it's just on how to diagnose uh, charging systems, so what we refer to as EVSEs, which is electric vehicle service equipment. So that's the thing that you plug into your vehicle when you pull into a parking lot or you pull into your home if you've got a charger mm-hmm. installed in your home. So that course has it is now rolled out, and we're going to be doing a part two of the uh, course that we're currently running. What, what's happened is we've landed up getting a lot of information and a lot of really good training aid in the classroom from Tesla. So oh. we, have a, we have a complete battery. We've got the control modules. We've got the motors. We've got – so part two is going to be a lot more on the Tesla stuff. Mm-hmm. The stuff we're doing right now is pretty generic – as far as it can be. Electric motors are really not much different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Batteries are not much different. They, there's really only sort of a couple of ways of doing it. So, But Tesla have kind of they've sort of broadened the, the scope somewhat. So, yes, yeah, so this will be the second part of this course will be this, uh, will be this Tesla, be, or more specific than what it currently is, yeah. Well, it sounds like you're quite busy in retirement and it sounds like BCIT (laughs) is offering, you know, quite a lot of options right now for people who are interested in, I guess, increasing their knowledge on electric vehicles. So this was wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. You're welcome. And I just would like to add is that I have been involved with the CSA, uh, Canadian Standards Association, along with several other instructors across Canada. And there is now a certification exam on the CSA website. It's called Auto EV or Auto, sorry, Electric Vehicle Technician Certification. And it's just gone live in the last three weeks, four weeks, something like that. And down the road, this is going to be a requirement. So it will be kind of an add-on for your red seal. You'll be able to say, produce a certificate to say, here, I have the certificate. It says I'm capable of working on these vehicles. So again, that's just been rolled out, but it was, we've spent the last probably year and a half actually developing that exam. Well, that's great. And I, we will link to that in our show notes. So if anyone out there is interested in learning more about it, um, we'll have that easily accessible to you in our show notes. Thank you so much, Steve. You're very welcome, Crystal. Great to uh, talk today. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Steve today. If you have thoughts on that interview or anything else EV related, don't forget that you can chime in and join the conversation in the EV Life group on the AMA mobile app. I look forward to seeing some of you in there. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you know when another episode is out. Talk to you then. Bye.